thank you, Lord, that our eyes of understanding are being opened and enlightened to the things that you would have us to be doing. We thank you, Lord, for the word that is being revealed to us openly. We're beginning to receive even more revelation of the word. We thank you, Father, again for your presence. Your presence in this place and the refreshing that comes as we opened you, open ourselves up to you. Father, we yield ourselves right now. We yield ourselves to receive what blessings you have in store for us this evening, whether it's in our children's area or whether it's in the youth services or even in the adult services, Father. Father, I believe that we will be doers of your word and not just hearers only when we go from this place. And Father, as the word goes forth, I believe that ministering oracles of God will go forth and people's lives will be changed from glory to glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, I want to turn someplace where I wasn't prepared to go, but that's okay. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We'll get to the message in just a second. This is part of the message. The Lord kind of gave me some instruction this week really about doing some teaching as opposed to ministering. I don't know. I really, to be honest, I don't know the difference between teaching and preaching. All I know is pastor said, hey, can you bring a message a couple weeks ago? And I'll say, sure. And I said, what do you want? And he said, whatever the Lord tells you to do. And so I'm like, Lord, all right, tell me something to do. And as I prepared and, and studied and uh, uh, prayed, I just still didn't know what I was supposed to do. So but one thing he did say is um, it, it's something that's been on my heart for quite a few weeks, and I didn't pick up on it really till Saturday, Saturday morning. But the, the word that's been coming to me has been, "If God before me, who can be against me?" You know, we we are dealing with what, what some people, what the world calls trying times right now, right? And I'm, I'm not I don't, I'm not one standing up here tell you everything. I got all the answers about the virus and you know all the other silliness that's going on. I, I don't I don't have any answers. I don't know if you do. If you do, come share with me after service, but I don't have the answers. However, the Lord had been dealing with me about Him being for me and not against me. There's a lot of people in the world that are against us, especially the Christians, right? There's people out there in the world that are against us. But the fact is that if He is for me, who can be against me? Yeah, right. Amen. And one of the things we have to do is recognize that on a daily basis that, you know, as you start off your day, start off your, off your day and say, Lord, if you're for me, who can be against me? And then answer that question and say, nobody. Amen. Nobody can be against you as long as he's for you. Amen. So we're going to start with uh, something here. Proverbs chapter four. If you have your Bible with you, you can turn there. If not, I'm sure you can follow along on the screen. But in Proverbs chapter 4, in verse 20, the Lord just kind of, kind of uh, brought this to my attention just a few minutes ago while I was back in the back there. It says, in uh, verse 20, it says, My son, talking to me, or if you want to, scratch through son and write daughter. He saying, My son or daughter, attend to my words. And I know you all know these scriptures. It says, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Well, I can stop right there and say, well, that kind of jives right in with what I was saying a little while ago, where if he's for me, who can be against me? He's telling me, hey, if you just, you, son, you, daughter, if you were attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. He's giving you instruction here. Amen. He's given, you know, we can get the cares of the world on us real easy. Some people did. Some people chose. We heard our pastor give us instruction about it. But some people chose to take the cares of the world on us. But he's saying here, attend to my words, incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. 
For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. What I want you to do, if you write in your Bible, if you're one that writes, I write mine all the time, I've got highlights, and I've got stuff that I've written years ago, and I don't even know what I wrote when I wrote it. I must have been in the Spirit at the time, because I can't make out half of what I wrote. Sometimes. But it must have been really good. I figured this, if I ever see something in my Bible where I've written something, and I can't make it out now, it must have been really good right then. So it's okay to have a smudge in your Bible if you must have wrote something really good right then. Amen. But my Bible says, keep thine heart with all diligence. What I want you to do, if you can, or if you want to, I want you to underline the word keep. Or highlight the word keep. Or however you want to bring some attention to that word keep. But it says, keep thy, keep thy heart. <coughs> keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And I like to read this scripture this way. If I don't keep my heart with all diligence, then out of it are the issues of life. So in other words, if I don't keep myself lined up with inclining myself to the word, now that may not be the true interpretation of what this is saying, but what I'm saying the way I read it is keep my heart with all diligence, because if I don't, then out of it are the issues of life. Right? We, I allow the issues of life to come in. That's the way I, I've already, 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 already always have received instruction on it. But that word keep there is, say it this way. It says, guard your heart. Or protect your heart. Or maintain a good heart. Or hold your heart. Retain the power and possession and do not depart from. He's saying, do not depart from the word. Incline yourself to the word. Do not depart from it. And he will have you back. Amen. Now that that this is that was a short short message. Now you get the other the other the other teaching that the Lord told me to. Kind of do tonight, and it's going to be short, so you guys will get out of here early. I'm sure you're glad of that. But um, if you're curious to know, Pastor is out of town. I believe they're on a little vacation, and uh, they'll, they should be back on Sunday, as far as I know, unless he calls us, and then James is going to be ministering on Sunday. If you're not sure. <laughs> <coughs> it's all right, Ms. Linda. He's all right. already been preparing all weekend. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad to know that. Anyway. Tonight, the title of the message or the teaching I've got for you is called All the Proof You Need. All the Proof You Need. If you could, turn to Romans chapter 8. One of my favorite texts in the Bible, uh, or chapters in the Bible, is Romans chapter 8. And as I was saying earlier, I was had been, uh, had been preparing, trying to prepare, and I wasn't getting much um, coming to me. I had to stop and pray a little bit, and of course, you know, my wife Lisa, I don't know if you know, she's out of town as well, she's up in Wisconsin right now, but uh, she was like, you know, I know you'll have something, it's something that's right under your nose or whatever, you just don't realize, it just takes, takes some time, and so sure was, it was under my nose all along, I just didn't, just didn't recognize it, but anyway, what the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight is, is uh, the fact that you need to acknowledge that you have all the proof you need. You have all the proof you need. For one, God is with you. Number two, God is for you. And number three, God is in you. Amen? Amen. God is for you. God is in you. Well, He's also with us, right? Is with us. Amen. Glory to God. And in Romans chapter 8, I want to start in verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the first requirement is you have to walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right? And then down in verse 10 it says, And if Christ be in you, 
The body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of the righteousness. This is life in the spirit. Jesus is alive in you. Did you know that? Amen. If you're a born again child of God, you're here tonight, you, you can honestly tell me that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the living, uh, living Lord, the living God is living on the inside of you. Amen. Amen? A lot of times we don't recognize the fact that Jesus is living on the inside of us. The Lord God is living on the inside of us. I say a lot of times. I don't, I hopefully not a lot of times. But, but the fact of the matter is I think we tend to forget sometimes that we have a living God on the inside of us. Amen? I mean, I had an opportunity today. And here I am coming tonight to bring a uh, teaching and a little message to you. And I had an opportunity today to, to kind of get out of that realm of no, acknowledging the fact that, wait a minute, Jesus is living on the inside of me. I don't have to take that, nor do you. But the spirit of him, that verse 11, but the spirit of him raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And then over in verse 16, it says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. That's the coming glory. Amen. And then over in verse 28, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate or preordain to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover whom, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen? We are called, we are justified, and we are glorified. Amen? We are called, justified, and glorified. The living God is for us. Yes. Amen. Amen? He is for us. He, any Christian today, living God is for you. Amen. Who can be against you? Amen? We're going to get into it right now in, in eight, uh, 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 verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 31. It says there in my Bible, it says in yours, of course, what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not, with they also freely give us all things? Who shall, i got to read it on a note because my, page, my Bible is torn. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that is justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who, is also, make, who also maketh intercession for us. Well, what I want to do is uh, read for you real quickly out of the Message Bible, verse uh, 8, 31 says, So, what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? God is for us. If he's on our side, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to make everything on, on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? He will do all things for us. Now over in uh, the New Living Translation, here is your proof. Remember the title of my message was All the Proof You Need. Here's your proof. I wrote, I pulled this out of the uh, New Living Translation and it just was very impactful to me. I hope it will be for you. And you can follow along if they have it on the screen. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? Now remember, we're talking about if God be for me, who can be against me? If he is for me, then I'm safe. Amen? If he is for me, then I have love. If he is for me, then I have healing. 
Amen. All the things that you can think about that you so desire to have. If he is for me, then I have it. And we can get into a faith message if we like, but it's not this, you know, the word is faith, right? We receive it. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? God is for us. Who dares accuse us from God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself, has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in a place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. God is with us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. God is with us. Am I convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love? I'm sorry. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. God is for us. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ our Lord. God is with us. Here's the proof. Romans 8.32. It says there, Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? God will graciously give us all things. God gave us the greatest gift. Yeah. God is with us. Romans 8.33 says, Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one will bring a charge against us. God himself has declared us righteous. Yeah. Romans 8.34 Who then will condemn us? No one for... Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand pleading for us. No one will condemn us. I wrote this down. Jesus died for us, was raised for us, is now at the right hand of God either interceding for us in intercession we are eternally secure in Christ. Yeah. God is for us. Yes. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute? or in danger, or threatened with death. Have you been there before? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. You may be saying, why is he reading these things over again? 
it's important for us to recognize that God is with us. And when you leave from this place tonight, I want you going, stirred up on the inside. Wait a minute, I have a God, a living God, living on the inside of me. I can conquer, I can overcome, and I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. All this anguish, all this stuff going on out there, it can't affect you. You have to choose to accept that. But you don't need to because it's all been covered. Amen. He's got our protection. He's got our back. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Christ, I wrote this down. Christ loves us and no enemy or weapon or calamity can separate us from the love of God. God is for us. Amen. God is for us. As I said a minute ago, and also God is with us. He's always with us. In Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Did he not say that? The word says it clearly. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. God is for us. God is with us. Always. Always. My encouragement to you tonight is just recognize the fact that you have that living God. He's with you right now. If you came here, here tonight in the doldrums, pick yourself up. Grab yourself by the back of the neck and say, wait a minute. I've got a living God on the inside of me. I don't have to take this anymore. Amen? You know, I don't have to take this anymore. And best of all, God is in us. God is in us. He dwells in us. He operates through us as long as we allow Him to. Amen? It does take, it's, too, it's two-sided. We both have to do it. But in, uh, <clears throat> everything you need is within you. The Spirit of God is within you. Amen? First Corinthians 3.16, I'm going to read this from the Weymouth Translation. I'm sure all of you have the way of sitting at home and you read it often. Um, but I pull, I pull this up. The Ray Weymouth translation, 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are God's sanctuary? And that the Spirit of God has His home within you? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, uh, 19, 19 through 20, the Weymouth translation again. Or do you not know that your bodies are a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is within you? The Spirit whom you have, have from God, and you are not your own, for you have been redeemed at infinite cost. Redeemed at infinite cost. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. God is in us. And 2 Corinthians 6.16 not the Weymouth, but the King James Version. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and move among them. And I will be their God. If you would, turn with me to 1 John. God is so good. I think I'm going to go to uh, chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. He says here this. It says, 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. But at first he said, verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone onto, out onto the world. We're seeing that today. Amen. Hereby now, ye spirits of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God, 
And this is that spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard that it, would, it should come and even now already is in the world. And he says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you, he is in us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. A lot of times we're not conscious of God being in us. If you were conscious all the time, would you talk the way you do? Would you act the way you do? Would you take the can't do attitude? You see, if we recognize that God is in us, that he gives us that ability, we can overcome all those things. Amen? We can come overcome all those things. I mean, I, probably one of the number one things is what it is, what, what we say, and how we can have conversation. And we're not doing a, again, um, having what you say per se, but it is this. If we're not mindful of our words, we can uh, give up on our testimony real quick. Amen? We can give up on our testimony. <clears throat> We're supposed to be Jesus-filled and Spirit-filled at all times. And the point tonight is just to recognize that Jesus, God, is in us. The power of God is operating on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. The greater one lives in us. He is greater than the devil the demon, and any evil spirits that are out there right now. Amen. Amen. He is greater than that. He is greater than sin, sickness, and disease. Amen. 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 He's greater than that. He is greater than any... Thank you, Lord. I was confronted with some things earlier today, and, I, and, and this will, it was right after I was, I was sitting at, um, at my desk, and I was reading... And I just stopped for a moment and I said, Lord, oh, what is wrong with the world? And he said, they just don't recognize my love. They just don't recognize my love. But he is greater than any force or power that tries to come against us. He is the greater one. Amen. He is the greater one. I appreciate the opportunity the pastor has given me tonight. But I want to uh, just say these last few things. And I, like I said, it's going to be a short message. If you can recognize, I wrote this today earlier, if you can recognize that the greater one is in you, then you will have victory over every circumstance. And you all know what a circumstance is, right? Mm -hmm. Circumstance is the circle in which you're standing in. You will have victory over every circumstance, the circle in which you're standing in. You'll have no insecurities, but only security in Jesus. You will have no fear, and you all know what fear is, right? If you're right, break it down. It's false evidence appearing real. You will know who you are in Christ. John 14, 16 through 17, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, who the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for, the, for he dwells with you and he will be in you. The whole purpose tonight was just to remind you of who he is and that he's in you at all times. Amen? I think one thing um, that we all need to recognize is this. We don't fear an invisible God. So we shouldn't fear an invisible virus. 
We don't fear an invisible God. We shouldn't fear the things that we don't know that are about to come. We have no reason to fear whatsoever. The Lord just really encouraged me earlier today. He said, just tell them, don't fear. There's no purpose in fear. If they recognize that I'm in there, I'm with them, I'm for them, I'm not against them, that they can operate in all the power that the Word provides to them, if they recognize that fear can't exist. And what has happened? A lot of people are reacting to something that they cannot see. But yet, we, we can believe in a God that we cannot see. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you, Father, for this evening. I thank you, Lord, for this quick teaching that you provided to me regarding you being in us and for us. We thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in the lives of the people of RLC. We thank you, Father, for the growth that's coming to this church because of the word of God that is going forth uncompromised in Jesus' name. And I believe, Father, because of the obedience of our pastor, following your will, following your direction, Father, I believe there will just be a mighty, uh, there will be a mighty, mighty lighthouse beacon in it at this place. Father, there will be people coming from hundreds of miles just desiring to be here because they have heard that they've heard that they heard that the uncompromised Word of God is going forth. I praise you, Father, for all those that come and be a part of this church. Lord, that they are growing, increasing in the things of God. And Father, they will be steadfast in sharing the love of Christ with those that they come in contact with. And we thank you for all that you're about to do, do this day. We thank you, Lord, for just protecting us as we go. And Father, I'll just say boldly, you are the God that never fails. And I believe that everyone in this place Everyone in this place has the victory they so desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate you being here. And like I said, Pastor will be back Sunday. And uh, 